So uh, my friend Elijah and one of the other players uh, has volunteered to help facilitate this meeting. So kind of him and me will both kind of lead this little meeting. But essentially, I'm hoping to get some feedback about uh, what you like about the game, what you don't like, and maybe, you know, some other points that anyone wants to bring up. And then having the players together like this gives us a quick chance to, like, kind of discuss with each other. Oh, yeah, no, that's a good idea. I don't I don't want you to do that. And, yeah, we all agree you should change that or whatever. So, yeah, why don't I hand over the meeting for now to Mr. Elijah and uh, we can continue. Um, hi, why don't we sort of maybe quickly go through each person and say, what do you like? Like, what keeps you coming back to the game and everyone get a chance to kind of go through that? And then we'll, then we'll go on what you don't like, and then we'll sort of more general brainstorm maybe about how to make it better. Does that sound good? I will take notes here. Jacqueline, do you want to go first? <laughs> um, yeah, um, so... Yeah, one of the things that I like about it is it it goes in with my competitiveness. <laughs> I'm very competitive when it comes to games. So I like that it lets me play against other people rather than play against a computer and you can't anticipate what other people are doing. Um, it's not really much I don't like about it. Like at the moment, I would like it if it would work on my laptop and not only on my desktop. That would be great. I don't know why that is. Okay. I know it's really, really weird. Yeah, that's about it at the moment. I can think I would open it at the moment on my laptop, but it won't let me. Okay, Shannon. Um, I like that my brother made the game, <laughs> and I like that I get to do surface scan that actually keeps me logging in constantly. So that was really what good. Does, Surface skin. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, and I don't like the planetary maintenance and that people will declare war on me. I don't like that. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Mark? All right. Well, I can probably go on for a bit here, but um, I guess I like the, the calm gameplay of just, you know, going through and maintaining things, you know, planning a growth or, you know, looking forward to how the planet will generate more research once you've finished building all the things for it, you know, and expanding. That's generally, it's fun to keep track of things and start sending ships around to, to you know, see where they're going, just clicking things around. Um, it's got a few too many clicks in some places, like commanding ships, especially if there's multiple ships in one spot. I don't know if we can design things to cut down on the number of clicks, because when I do sit there and play it, it is a click, 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 click. It's going to have a lot, but whatever can be done to cut down clicks, I think, is, should be optimized as much as possible. Um, Agreed. That's true. I think right now, I don't know how it's going to be with a lot of players, you know, um, Sometimes I come up, you know, there's not a lot of reason to declare war sometimes. Like, I don't have a lot of reason to do a lot of things except keep growing and expanding and things like that. But if there could be sort of uh, incentives to doing things, like, I'm not quite sure what things, but, you know, extra colonizations or even winning battles or things like that, um, you know, just even just merit points or something like that. To just keep people doing different things otherwise you might just end up the very peaceful game even though it, you know it's clearly pretty war based <laughs> Since, no it's not <laughs> it can be peaceful i like playing can peaceful. Be, but you know there's a lot of it that's put put into the combat and the uh you know there's way more military ships he's built than civic ships so that's where that comes from um i I kind of liked how, or one thing I felt about this instance of the game is that, you know, the research was slowed down a bit, but um, I got to anti-gravity drives really fast and that really changes the game. I was only on my second system, I think, when I got anti-grav drives this time. And I, being able to not like having to wait for your ships to get to other systems, I think at very early days of low technology is something that 
could be you know expanded a bit upon and before you just start jumping across the entire galaxy but um that was one thought just the pace of the anti-gravity drives was quite early on i felt um i don't know i'll stop for now but basically yeah just watching my civilizations grow each colony too it's probably one of the fun parts. It sucks to run out of things to build, in fact. Oh, right. cool. I don't awesome. know how you can come up with an endless amount of things to build, though. But... <laughs> Chris? I think you got to take your, uh, get your microphone going. Yeah, true. Um, yeah, I like... I just kind of kind of like mark I, I like the style of game i like the 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 strategy uh managing resources and 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 research and kind of you can set your own prioritization um and, and you can kind of choose choose directions to go um i like that it's uh multiplayer um i think uh, maybe to kind of add a little bit onto what mark was saying um a little bit more ways or or incentive to like interact with with other players um, the, I guess the, the interaction options are, are kind of like basic um, right now. And um, I think uh, probably the biggest downside is kind of like like late game when you have like 50 planets or more and a whole bunch of like star bases and stuff and kind of exploring at the same time. It's just like a lot of click, a lot of clicks and takes like a lot of time. Um, so it, it kind of turns from like a a nice, easy, like casual game where you can just maybe play for like a half hour to um, when you really get into it and get lots of planets, it could take like more than like an hour a day just to like go through every planet and every ship and every star base. Okay, yeah. How about communication with the other players? Like, as you said, it's kind of limited. In other games, I've had like a chat where you make an alliance and then you can chat with people. And then you actually have a chat open. And then there's a galactic chat where you can just put message everybody. Do you think that would help in this game or do you think it would get in the way? I think one of the issues would be it gives you an idea of how many players are in the game. So when you're first starting, there could be five other players or there could be 25 other players. And if you have a group chat for everyone automatically, even if you haven't made contact, you know how many people to look out for in the system. Um, so if there was like a separate overall game chat for all of, because you know how you're going to have the different worlds and the different um, universes, like for literally everyone who's playing and then you can get rooms depending on interest, but having it be specific to that one universe, it, it can give you a bit of an edge if you know how to do it. I think you can send any like an open message to any the players that you know. So I think it does have a very open messaging system at least. You know, um, I don't know if yeah, just a galaxy chat might kind of spoil some of the surprise of the game. What are some functions that are like are just missing that might be in other games, like a leaderboard? Like, would you want to know the points? of the other players and how they're sort of doing compared to you? Well, you kind of do in when you make political alliances, you see how many planets mm -hmm. they have and how many systems and things like that. But um, mm -hmm. that goes back to my other point that, you know, you might want to have more of a point system mm -hmm. of some fourth sorts. Mm -hmm. Just well, you keep watch the mystery motivated. as well. Yeah, exactly. The mystery is good. I I think um, more of an incentive would be, for example, you have discovered 54% of the galaxy. And so what that means is you've looked yeah. at 54% of the planet. So you don't know how many people there are. You don't know the <laughs> scores of other people, but you know how much you've accomplished for yourself um, and having those goals of like, you have now, you know, scanned 50% of planets in the, in the entire galaxy, or you have um, telescoped 90% of the planets that there are type thing, just so you can kind of- And then of... you get rewards. You could get yes. like a bunch of metal alloys or something. That would be pretty cool. I'd be okay with that. Yeah. And again, it's incentivization for continuous play as well. 
How much time do you average a day um, playing? At the moment, not a lot for me because I know that there's going to be the the beta one. So that's more, I'm not too focused. And also my difficulty is I quite like to do it when I'm like chilling on the couch and it's not working on my laptop. It's now in a loop Nova. So it's now gone from not logging me in to I, I put in my password and then it loops around to the beta screen, which loops around to another screen, which loops around to the beta screen, which loops around to another screen and it just goes in a circle. But on my desktop, it's absolutely fine. Like, it's really bizarre. You're muted, Nova. <laughs> Nova, you're muted. Mutey, mute face. We can't hear you, Nova. All right, I will fix your laptop today. Awesome. And then I can do it on the couch. Um, but yeah, I'm just kind of like waiting for beta, like the next round, because I'm like, well, what's the point? Especially because I've got uni starting tomorrow. So I'm like, eh. Yeah, I, I play several hours a day sometimes. It's pretty easy to play on the side of work because sometimes I'm just waiting for things to happen or in a boring meeting even if it ends early and I don't know. Maybe it's slacking off. <laughs> yeah, some days I'll play it like throughout the day. If you add up all the little times I'd log in, do some stuff and go do something else and come back, log in, I'd probably be like a couple of hours a day maybe, but then there are other days where I don't even log in. But then I, yeah, I just forget because I'm busy or whatever. Yeah, you're if but you, we're at war or something. You you gotta log on like pretty often. Yeah, I gotta log on at night to destroy you because you keep attacking me <laughs> <laughs> like a jerk. <laughs> I think I felt waking up. I think you should feel <laughs> bad because you started it. <laughs> no, Mark and uh, Shannon had a pretty devastating war last game. We did, and I didn't it's even want to be at war. Stuff. I was planning to be peaceful the whole time, but you forced what? me. You like yeah me so badly just because no. I was sending like setting up any. <laughs> you started it. You started it. <laughs> I dispute that. Oh, uh, well. <laughs> uh, you, were the, you, you were the queen of the galaxy last game? What? You were the queen of the galaxy last game? Was I queen of the galaxy now? I don't you know. Queen so, something something though. Someone, someone is I, just whooping I I everybody. Did, I think I did technically win the last game if there is such a thing as winning um, Game of the <laughs> Planet. <laughs> I think you were queen. I think you were going for a um like an avatar thing. So you were queen Terry or something. I was. Last. I was a queen. That's true. Yeah. I was. I forgot about that. Yeah, it was actually funny because I saw it was a feminine leader, so I assumed it was Nova's sister, but I had no oh. idea. So no. Oh, I see. Well, I guess so I, I, thought, I, thought, I thought maybe you were cheating or something. Oh <gasps> no! I never cheated. No, she, she wouldn't just let me anyway. That's true. You, she yeah. basically <laughs> pretend or tried never to go to war the whole game and had like a ton of resources. So when Mark started attacking her, she just went crazy with building. That's right. When Mark started it, no, <laughs> uh, I only moved ships around. I think you were no. the first to attack. No. Oh, actually, I think you did declare war on Mark. Well, I did just warn him near you or something. <laughs> Yeah, I told actually, him to go right. away, and he refused. He was very you really mean to those mollusks. <laughs> that, that's basically <laughs> how it started with me too. Because oh, I yeah, got that. a couple of warnings, I ignored, and then I felt the wrath of oh, the queen. I mean, why did you ignore <laughs> them? They were legitimate warnings. Yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> why, why would we do that? Um, uh, yeah. So I think. Oh, oh yeah. What, go ahead. Like the one thing that um, could be a pretty fun thing to get would be those heroes you know you can start the game with one when you're building your civilization by the leaders but then he's all, yeah but then he's stuck on your home planet and you know you can't be moved um that's true and i know that if you die if your home planet gets exterminated and then you rebuild it you get him back too <laughs> um Dude. anyway oh that's it would cool, be cool <laughs> if there's a if there's a way to get ones on other planets you know through achievements and things like that that would be a pretty awesome thing. Mm. To, and then I like other planets idea. can be yeah. pretty awesome as well because sometimes there's no way your other planets can be as good as your home planet, but maybe that's the way. But it would be awesome if you like had a new empire center and kept building up with new heroes and things like that. Mm. Yeah, I was actually thinking that too. That's in that, did, did you ever play that other uh, strategy kind of planet space game? Shit, no, I didn't, sorry. They, they, actually, they actually have that um, in, in that game too. Where they have kind of like the idea of, of uh, 
I guess people with specialties and they can like join your planet and give your planet research boost or production boost and things like that too. Um, but yeah, I think that works out pretty well too. To, to, as you get kind of further in the game, you can kind of give your planets boosts through, uh, through that type of thing as well. Mm -hmm. I actually kind of like the limited landmass idea too. I know Mark said he wants to build more, but just kind of the idea of maybe continents are kind of limited size that you can kind of have to pick and choose what you build and you can't actually build everything and have like super planets and every planet too, which would maybe be interesting. Maybe like the really small planets, you can only build like a limited amount of things or something. Maybe for Yeah, like in, in that other game, you had like a, I guess, limited landmass due to whatever size the continents were. And then you would have, let's say like 10, 10 squares, then you can only build like 10 things um, out of like the list of like 50 things. So you kind of have to like pick and choose a, a specialty for the planet instead of like everything. Mm. What do you guys Boo. think about that? Boo. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, That's all I'm, not sad. Sure how, I'm not sure how, how much land mass, you know, maybe if a planet was very limited, but there should be other ways to do it. Like you should be able to build, you know, uh, underwater or spatial places at higher costs and stuff perhaps but yeah, it's yeah like what you you're forced that, to do like as oh, your yeah. technology builds up then you can like terraform squares and like convert ocean squares and stuff so as your technology increases you can actually build more on the planet too because if you're an aquatic species you know you'll want oceans anyways and it should be more habitable for you if it's completely ocean or something like that and maybe another cool idea would be if you're terraforming planets and you're an aquatic species, you terraform it differently than another species might if they're terraforming. So you can't just, you have one generic terraforming goal at this point, but maybe other species should be specialized for types of planets and their terraforming should go to that. So then if I take over their systems, I'd have to re-terraform their planets if I wanted to thrive on them or something like that. I'm not sure that'd be easy to do, but. It's an idea. No, that would be annoying, but actually it sounds pretty realistic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. One yeah. thing I would like um, different or slash fixed is um, transporting people between planets. Yes. Because you can only be able to do 15,000 at a time. If you're wanting to yeah. move like 10 million, it's it's just, it's ridiculous. That's why I don't even what? use it. A couple billion yeah, it's impossible. Or being able yeah, to at least impossible. automate it so that it can do it itself. So even if you're not if it, even if it is for lots of 15,000 at a time, it's automated doing it itself. So you don't need to be constantly doing it because you can, it takes forever. So, or yeah, get no, it back up, even, it was like a hundred thousand at one point. Yeah. Just increase it. Even if it's, I mean, being automated isn't really that great, but just increase it. Like it just, or, or maybe you don't make it take so long to get the teleportation thing because sometimes you just want to like evacuate a planet and you just can't. Well, or like you know, other increasing sure. maybe I, I could change the transport ships to like I don't know transport convoy or something and put it up to like a million a ship. That would be better. Yeah. All right. Still automating the transport lines might be. Uh, yeah, if I want to move like a billion people, it's still impossible. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah. Sure. But what about what about the transport net though? Or what is it? What is the one where you can like teleport um, your people? Planetary instantly? gateways. And they take forever to get, the right? The game. Yeah, it's near the end of the level three. And then you can okay. transport units and population from planet to planet without any ships, just like walk them through a gateway. Didn't yeah, but that yeah. takes too long, too long to get that. Yeah, and it didn't work last time. But I'll yeah, make it true. work this time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, uh, I want to I want to ask about uh, something that uh, Mark brought up, and and we I want I need I need feedback on that. Um, like getting faster than light travel, or or like fast star to star travel early. Uh, yeah, it does kind of change the game when that happens. So. But it also depends on if a person is doing that. Like I didn't get my anti grav tool way later because I was prioritizing different things first so it, it depends on what you're prioritizing for prioritizing to be able to get whatever it is first I think I prioritized trying to be able to terraform um yeah, because because I, I like to terraform the planet so I don't need to worry about any of the crap later so that was my priority over anti-grav 
Mm. Um, so yeah, I didn't get it for ages. Well, I think I got it for like I, three weeks ago because I, I, I forgot. But maybe I also the path think is like just a little the, too direct. Well, that's possible. The path might be too direct. I think also like. I mean, for me, like, it's really boring as a player. Like, I can't, I, like, I personally don't have a very, like, long tolerance for my ships going at, like, a snail speed. Like, I will just be like, I hate this game and I never want to play it again. And I'll, like, never want to do anything because I'm just like, I can't do anything. So I don't think you need to, you can't make it, like, too crappy because then it'll put people off. But maybe, like, a slightly less direct path, like Mark said, might be, might be, like, a good medium ground. Well, maybe the drive ships don't go. a little bit too fast, and then there's still another drive to get to, right? Disjunction? No, yeah, yeah. Just comes first. And then, and then subspace, right? Oh, oh wait, am I oh, yeah, then there's I guess, yeah, any grab is pretty high, sort of. Yeah. Well, you start with that Abercrombie one, right? No, that doesn't go anywhere, right? Yeah. Well, what? yeah, actually, you don't even start with it, but you, that's the first one you can get. Yeah, you start with propellant rockets. Oh, yeah. Good old NASA. Giant. <laughs> yeah. Solid. Like, I can have a battleship right now that can cross corner to corner of the galaxy on anti drive drives in a day. It's pretty fast. Oh, that's pretty fast. Yeah, yeah that's too. Oh, well. That's surprising. Yeah. I think maybe one of the problems is how they stack, is, is you can just put a whole bunch on one and it just kind of cumulatively adds up really fast. Maybe, Maybe that's to the reduce the stacking a little bit too. Oh, oh like no, but you're, su you're supposed to make a ship that we can just build anything we want on it. Where's that? Mm. That's a big priority. It's on my big. list. No, but it oh. needs to be at the top. Of your and list. Um, costs <laughs> beside the components when we're looking at it. Like, how much is this thing going to add to the ship? Yeah. How many lanthanides? How many alloys? Mm -hmm. Do I want 10 of these or do I want two? Can't. Mm hmm. Right. Bust up the calculator every time. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yep. Totally. Okay. Yeah. Uh... Just like how you didn't have descriptions of them for a long time, and it was very confusing whether or not we yeah. wanted something or not. I think and super mega costumes. ships when sort of advanced enough. You know, things that could make other ships too, and well, engineer. Yeah, like engineering ships plus hangers, like a Death Star, perhaps. You know, but it doesn't have to be so deathy. Like a giant space yard or something that like makes lots of stuff really fast or yeah, when you when we super advanced, it'd be awesome to be sending just gigantic motherships around. Hmm. Sure, you just want to send death stars everywhere. Yeah, I don't like the sound of that at all. I don't necessarily want to be warlike all the time. It definitely should be peaceful goals to this game, like you know, create even striking pieces should give you big rewards and <gasps> Yeah, I think you should get external threats would be neat too. Like if there's like I don't know, maybe inspired by reality. But if your species had to overcome a pandemic and research the, the way out of it and other such problems too, that might be pretty cool. Well, one of the things that I had and I, I it's annoying, but it actually makes sense and I like it is that if you colonize a planet from a player that no longer plays anymore, you inherit all of their pollution. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah. that, that's a bug. Yeah. I will fix that. Oh wait, no, I guess that makes no, it makes sense. That's not a bug. No, that makes sense. Sense. That's a, yeah, that's not a bug. That's so, like, a I bug. I took over oh, yeah. Scott's planet yeah. because he stopped playing, and so I inherited all of the low pollution and everything that he had created from his original buildings and stuff. So, it totally did you get the building to too? Did no. you get the stuff? No, oh. because they're part of they're part of the society that are now the native species. Right, right. So but is that what happens? So uh, yeah, if, you get, if, you if someone stops playing for you know a couple weeks or something like that, depending on their government, their government will begin to degrade every three days. They'll get threatening emails from me, and eventually <laughs> their their society, their empire will just disappear, and any planets they have will turn into just native species planets. Yeah, there still needs to be something you can do because, like, when I was in Wellington for um, that weekend, I had no internet, so I couldn't play. So, like, my plan, my thing really degraded and it wasn't because i didn't want to it was because i had no internet to be able to well, do it no but technically remember you didn't actually log in for 10 days yeah but we're not ignoring that bit that's the bit we're ignoring we just but I, did, I, that I didn't have internet but i did i did say to nova it doesn't seem fair that some like people do have legitimate reasons sometimes like they're ill or they're 
I don't know, whatever, right? Like, pizza, you go to work trip or something. Sure. It's not really fair that their empire, like, implodes. <laughs> Maybe in a month or something, but... Yeah, it's not, like, a 10 days. Well, I mean, my, my goal was to not have a bunch of, like, players log in and then never play again, and then there's all these empires sitting around doing nothing that it was kind of True. weird. But I guess, I don't know, I guess people could just blow them up and no one would stop them either. So maybe it's not really necessary. Yeah. I don't know. What about yeah, an inactive just... button where you just, you can shift your empire to inactive and that means you're going to play, but you just, you can't for just like some some reason. I wonder if people would abuse yeah. that though. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess there's a lot of bon or penalties for just not playing anyway. You don't get any, like once your research is finished, your scientists sit around and do nothing. And you're not doing yeah. anything. And people can just attack you, and there's you know there's nothing happening. I have to rethink that maybe. Um, what happened? Like if you would like, has anyone? Do you get eliminated through war? Like you take over the planets? Is there uh, some sort of way to see how to win battles kind of thing? Yes, is there? Uh, like there's, there's a guide, you mean? Of well, like, some, something like, like there's no... I've never real... invaded a plan as far as I, I've never got to. That does now work. You can invade planets. No. Yeah. Oh. So, oh, on that note, is there anything other than transports that will be able to transport you know, fighting units because then we're stuck with the same crappy transport you want to get slaughtered in the battle kind of uh well yeah you can okay yeah basically how it works is once your ships go into orbit of a planet any of their orbital defenses or ships orbiting their planet will fight you and if you win and you still got stuff left then you can uh you can send in transport ships and you can also escort them with assault fighters and then they will try to breach any smart mines orbital drones and fighter fighter craft they have once they land on the surface they dump all their troops and they try to leave the surface uh and at that point the ground battle just continuously happens until one side defeats the other so but i mean on the other side um i mean just on the way there you should uh like they're sitting ducks as it were if i encounter a fleet of dreadnoughts against my fleet of transports they're gone oh yeah definitely yeah you gotta <laughs> you gotta escort those transport ships yeah, but then, you know, they're slow, those damn slow transports compared to dreadnoughts. And maybe that's the stacking of warp drives, uh, right. high speed drives. Yeah, yeah it's that, quite hard to get them to go in unison. And really, really defend. hard to get them to go. But what if you put them in the same fleet? It would just go at whatever speed the slowest ship was. Yeah, that's, that's what true. happens. The damn but transports are so damn slow. Yeah, that's true. They are super, super slow. Yeah, you need to expand the engine capacity. On those once you well, level just up different classes yeah different class of transport okay well maybe i don't know yeah i'm thinking now i should i should definitely limit the amount of engines per ship to something and then maybe also put more engine spots on the transport ships for instance and try to like balance out the different classes of ships so it's yeah you know none of them are incredibly slow and none of them are incredibly fast i guess it's fun to have lots of different types of ships to choose from and build, though. So yeah, you don't I, have to cut I that. Know that. No, okay. Yeah. I like. It. You don't have I to. Know no, no, no. I'm agreeing with you, Mark. I think oh, that's okay. true. I don't want it to be. I don't want it to be limited that much. Maybe just have yeah. like a transport ship, you know, Mark One, which is like kind of crappy and slow. And then once you like get further along, you can have like a transport mm -hmm. ship that's better and has more engine spots. So there's I think like, it's like two different. You know, as you expand your um, ability to big bigger warships like from battleship to dreadnought other ships should get bigger too like the small transport yeah. to the bigger transport class and yeah now you can build this awesome science ship you know like yeah totally yeah, yeah i agree that's a good idea because then you feel like you're you always have something more to reach for as well which keeps you coming back yeah and you sent that uh a long time ago you turned on sensor sweeps for a little bit and it was way too overwhelming but then i made me think like it was pretty cool to just maybe if I could turn it on on a ship for a moment and see what it can, what it's actually scanning for. That would be pretty cool. Like, I don't know. I send them everywhere and I'm not exactly sure what I'm seeing, how close I got to send it to other systems. How to, have I scanned it successfully? But, like the radius yeah, of, of sensors? 
Yeah. Yeah. Remember that sensor sweep that was green? Along, he put it on for a couple yeah, of days. That was crazy. It was crazy, <laughs> but then yeah, being able to see that at a limited capacity might be pretty cool. Yeah, I think if you had it as a, something you could toggle on and toggle off, and um, when it's toggled on rather than showing a scanny thing, it just shows this is the area which you were able to scan completely in this one moment. And it would just show as a like a green or a pink or whatever it is, just so you can see everywhere it's scanning at that one moment and where you can't see out of it. And then you can toggle it off again. And then it's not going to be annoying you all the time. And it's not going to have that stuff. Thing. But then if you see a bunch of stuff, does it stay like afterwards or does it disappear once you turn it off? It does already. It, that's a that's a tech. Oh yeah, thing. that's true. It's something that goes oh, yeah. on already. We just yeah, can't see just exactly be, yeah. what's happening. It'd just be good so to know toggle, how far yeah. your scan is actually gone. It would be like selected fleet, and then you can see what it's scanning, or all scans, and you would see what everything is scanning for a moment, or just off. Yeah, that's a good idea. I think hmm. that's good. I actually kind of like a fog of war idea too. Like at the start, you wouldn't see all the stars. You'd see maybe just a limited radius around you. And then like as your tech and sensors go, then you kind of see more of the galaxy as well. Uh, yeah, but at the same time, I, I like that idea because civilization, so many games have it, and I, I want to do that, but uh, hiding the stars doesn't make sense scientifically because you can literally see them all right now yeah. and point your telescope at them and such. <laughs> They're not that far. Well, but it's only sort of, to a certain extent. It's sort of like, like the, the game party can... has a built-in invisible fog of war. It's just, it's just you can't see it, which is weird. But like, sometimes yeah, ship, telescopes you know, don't reach that far. Like, uh, no. This is a, I mean, this is a tiny piece of the galaxy anyway, right? They can definitely reach as oh, far yeah. as you can finish it up. Oh, yeah, I guess that's true. Maybe but that's yeah, the like point, the, though. Maybe you right want to now, like, if, your, if your ship gets sensed and then it keeps going past things, you will, you know, you're not going to sense those ships anymore. Like, ah, anyway, there is a fog of war, but it's, it's invisible, <laughs> which is super weird, but I don't think any game have that. What, what is that fog of war? What are you talking about? When well, like you, you, when things disappear off your site, you can't see it anymore. Oh, is that a special term for or, it? I didn't love it. Or, or when yeah. you start, okay. you have like a blank map, and only like what you explore, you you reveal. Yeah, I'm, I've seen that in games. That's kind of fun because then you're like, "Ooh, what's over there? What's over there?" Like in Skyrim, they do that, and then you have to like keep going, and then you see something more, more map. I do like that idea. But yeah, I can't ignore the fact that you'd be able to see all the stars in the first place. So. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I think the other thing is maybe that you see all the planets maybe you're limiting the view of the planets or something well but you can, you can only see them after you telescope a system at the moment but you can see that they're there like waiting to be telescoped you can just see that there's a star there you don't even know if there are any planets oh yeah that's true actually yeah. kind of... that's true yeah that's true But yeah, it'd be cool if you could sorry. expand your ability to telescope extra too. Like after you gain so many systems, maybe then you can telescope twice at once. That'd be cool. All right. Does anyone have any other ideas or things that they hate or love or think I should do? <laughs> you need to be able to create fleets on mass. So instead of adding one chip at a time, be able to go, I'm adding 50 dreadnoughts to this fleet. I'm adding yeah. 25 to this you fleet. Rather than click, add, click, add. Yeah, can no, you? you can select all your ships and add them to the fleet now. Yeah, but if, you're wanting, if you've got like, say, a uh, thousand ships, but you only want a fleet of 50 and only yeah, 50. Yeah, you don't want to click 50 times. Click add, There's click add, click add, click add. Just be able to go fifth. Click add fifty. Oh yeah, that would be cool. Well, no. Why? <laughs> hey, there's Whoa. a bug. One thing about select all is if like you're on the star view and you see the star and then your ship below it, you'll select the star as well, and then you can't command oh. your fleet and. Oh my god! If you're yeah, there with a really neutral annoying. ship, then it might. Also oh, select okay. the neutral ships too. I don't know. So but hang on, Jack. Jack's idea is good though. Oh my god! Okay. 
No, but you gotta you gotta do like you gotta listen to Jack's idea more because it's annoying well, just to click fifty times. If you have one thousand ships and you want to create a fleet of fifty ships, yeah. uh, you want to you want to create like ten fleets of fifty ships, for example. Yeah, ten fleets of fifty. Yeah, I, I mean, the thing is, that's I think there's going to be very limited times when that's needed. Last and time I used one thousand ships in the same place. If you didn't get them there with fleets in the first place, that would have been a little bit crazy. Like because you built them there, stretch. I think. But you, I, well, maybe not a thousand, but maybe a hundred, and you want to do like five fleets of twenty or something. That did come up a lot for me last time. I think it only yeah, takes too much to do that. What can, what was a problem for me is like splitting out different ships. Like if I had a bunch of Mark uh, twos yeah. and Mark threes in one pile, and I'm like, oh, I want all the Mark twos to go over here. <laughs> oh boy, was that difficult. But. Yes, yes, yes. That was mm -hmm. horrible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was so annoying. It, mm -hmm. it, it really is does come up a lot, Nova. Hmm. Um, also, uh oh, I forgot now. It's definitely another thing. Well, I'll say this instead. Uh, moons are a big deal to me, so when I can't see how many moons a planet has, that really sucks. And that happens when they have a native species. You can't tell how many moons it has until you colonize oh, it and oh. find out again. Yeah, you should, you should be able to see. Yeah, you should be able to see that when you're scanning. Um, logically, at the very least, when you're scanning a system, if not mm. when you are telescoping a system, you should be able to see it, because that's pretty much what happens now. What do you mean by scanning a system? Surveying? So if you scan it, if you scan a system with a science ship, it will tell you how many lathanides, how you know, how many, any parts per million for all that jazz, but it doesn't tell you how many moons. Uh, yeah, no, it will tell you how many moons, but apparently not if you have native species there, which I didn't know. I didn't know that either. But yeah, I'm actually, you don't even have to survey a planet normally to see that it has moons. I think I agree with it, to having to survey to see the moons, but just that little bug. Mm. Yeah. Otherwise, it's working. That's the only thing I can think of about the moons that's not working out. Um, you nerfed uh, or lunar mining quite heavily. I don't know what everyone else thinks of it. I that was like the backbone of just producing all. I like um, that too. Lunar mining. All, is good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it may have deserved to be nerfed somewhat um, because it was just a hugely powering my war machine. If it came to that, you know. <laughs> It just yeah, all, I, yeah, I, really, uh, of... I really dumbed down the production this time around because yeah, it's uh, a few ways. Like the the obviously the production sliders has been a huge change. Uh, actually, yeah, after like a couple weeks or a few weeks of that, now I, I'd like to know kind of what everyone feels about those sliders being massively changed like that. Uh, they need to be slid. You need to be able to slide them. I hate that. Plus, 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 minus, 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 plus, plus, Or at least put them on the left side so they don't move around. You have to chase the plus button around. Yeah, you have to chase it. No, don't even have the plus button. Have it be like you can type in like 20%, 50%, and then also have an actual slider. Yeah, I don't want to have to type. No, but you can have an option. I only have one hand free, and you just click, click, click. Yeah, yeah way too much the interface there sucks. Um, yeah. But also, like, what do you guys feel like? Because now, obviously, uh, it's you know it's more important to use those. And the like before, it was very easy to get resources and research, I guess. Because yeah, those things actually weren't calculating the way I originally had. And then so suddenly, I changed it one day, and now it's massively reduced. Do you guys? Yeah, that was stupid. You know? I hated I mean, that day. <laughs> it was the, out of control. Other issue, sure. the other issue that i have with the sliders is, is that if you plus one it automatically will ch will shift one of the other sliders but you can't choose which one it shifts so you're for having to like plus and minus the different ones to try and get the ratio that you want because you can't specifically go i want this it just does it itself yeah i mean I that's pretty normal to go. yeah that's pretty normal I, I don't know how else i could do that sliders yeah. like the extra slider things instead of just the pluses but as soon as you slide it the other ones will slide to compensate automatically right that's how sliders work there has to be a way around it because it drives me nuts because it always does the wrong one <laughs> just <laughs> learned which one you're doing you, you gotta figure yeah. out <laughs> i had to adjust it's always the same really if you if you reduce research or whatever then you boost up construction and 
So oh, I didn't gotta, know that. Gotta That's play interesting. The game. Yeah, you just gotta figure the pattern. It's all the same. At least. I thought yeah, it was just always the last one you minus was the one that goes. It's a, it does it the same every every time. So yeah, you just no. There's a definite pattern to figure out. Oh. Sure, how much I know, but they definitely need to be slid. Like it's so annoying to have to press the stupid plus sign. And I agree, it's even stupider that the plus sign moves around because that's just difficult for no reason. <laughs> I would do sliding and plus button in case I, you know, don't trust how accurate my sliding can be or something. Like that. Depends how easy it is, I guess. Mama. <laughs> Hi, Michael. And who's Hi, Michael. Uncle. <laughs> what else? What else? Um, I feel like there's something else about the sliders. Um, oh yeah, that they could they show like a percentage because then you would know. Like I mean, I know it goes either all the way down or like you know, part, like you know, I know it shows the ratio just by virtue of a picture, but. I like to see the percentages, like I have 0% production or like 5% or something like it would make a difference, especially if they were just actual slider sliders because then you'd want to make sure you're doing what you want. Yeah, just on the bar, see what the percentage is. Yeah, like right on yeah. the bar, yeah. Yeah, on like, uh, okay. That might be annoying to program, but it would be no, really helpful. No, just fit in. Yeah. No, I can do that. Cool. So I guess, uh, does anyone have any ideas or, or questions or concerns about this beta launch, how it will go with more players, this sort of idea? Is the server going to crash? I'm going to get a new server this week. So, you know. are, you, are you going to do it so that there's only x amount of players per room to try and test it automatically putting other people into other rooms because if you've got 100 people in that one universe that's going to be a lot yeah, the, is the universe bigger uh, I, I, no i'm planning to have 100 people per instance and yeah it'll automatically kick people to a new instance if we get over 100 right now 35 people have signed up so we'll see it's still another way like, to go it's true like what jack says is true though with even with just like the six of us or whatever like when you get I, like a few planets like you can really occupy the universe like you know what i mean like I it's gonna be tight definitely want there to be more people than just 10 or oh no i think more people is good but i just mean the universe is quite small for only that many people mm. well if, technically if there's, for, there's the for 1, example, 600, uh, star systems no, what? Yeah, but you've also got to think of think of it in context of the entire galaxy you've got what was it 1600 planets if say for example 10 percent of them have no no planets inside those star systems at all right that's well, 1500 1600 star systems right now in this instance there's 95,000 planets for instance yeah, no, but what I'm meaning is just going by star systems alone. So if you have 1,600 star systems, but not all of them have planets. She just doesn't want to fight so easy. So, yeah, so once, if you have, like, um, 100 people and they have five planets each or five star systems each, that's 500 star systems. Um. It's where, where I'm talking about the territories. Like if they have 500 different solar systems that are currently occupied, that's where it comes very difficult, especially when you can't tell by looking at it, which person is which, because you've got all of your, um, all of one civilization, all your friends are blue, all your enemies are red, all your neutrals are a different color. So, you, so if you're at war with three different people, you can't tell who's who. If you're friends with 10 different people, you can't tell who's who. I, I, think, I think 100 people will be okay, but I mean, we are testing, so we'll see. And I'm not sure if we'll actually get 100 people Probably not by the gonna, first, but people will trickle in a little bit too. Flags. You got to fix your flags. There's only like a couple of ways to make them look different. You need to have a different background option. And oh, yeah. okay. it should be mandatory between the two types of symbols, option between either of them. The stripes need to be expanded, I think, a little bit more, especially if you're going to have so many people. There's only so many ways to make a flag look different right now. And yeah, that's even true. So still I'm already confused between four of us that I can see with flags. I'm like, who's 
Yeah, shit, that's true. Well, Even if someone just had a do, straight blue can flag. Can we upload like, our own you, flag? Like, can't we just upload a cool picture that yeah. we like and that could be our flag? I guess it's kind of miniaturized though. The, right? the other thing is if I say, for example, hover over a planet, which I know is Shan's planet, it would be good if it will highlight all of Shan's planets and all of Shan's ships on the script, on the, on the mini map. And then if I was to move to Nova, then it would not show Shan's if, um, territory, but it would show all of Nova's territory. So you can kind of figure out who's who and where's where, rather than it all being blue or green or red. Is that making sense? You kind of get that on the politics screen though, don't you? When you highlight, hold your mouse over a player, it shows all the planets highlighted in white. Yeah, but then and you have to go back and remember where they were. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mm. And, uh, and also when you've got a hundred different people but if you can just kind of do it on your main map it just makes it easier than having to go back and forward and back and forward so when you hover over someone else's planet or a ship it would highlight it similar to what it does in the politics screen until you hover yes, up of them yes but and just on the mini map yeah because the other issue with, with the mini map is I'm still having glitches with the mini map when it comes to um, the civic screen and that it sits in front of my messages screen and not behind oh, it. Me too. Me too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm hoping to fix that this week. Well, what do you guys think about the idea that if you hover over, you know, similar to the politics screen, but on the main but screen like that too? It's a mystery, though, yeah. isn't it? Like you don't know where those people are, though. So you would. If want you know to who they are. But... Yeah, and just the ones that you can see, obviously. Well, well okay. Um, hmm. The mini map in the politics screen is buggy, by the way. I, that. Yeah, I know. Very yeah. Buggy. Okay. Super buggy. Thoughts all over. All right. Yeah, that's a that's a fine idea, I think. Just to so group all the people so that you know which civilizations how, how much they are uh, colonizing. Yeah. I think it's yeah, I think it could be helpful because it is kind of, it will be like it is kind of confusing now with only a few Hi. people. So I can imagine Hi. like thirty or a hundred people it would be. Uh. Yeah, the, the flag, a... I'd like to be able to upload flags, but the yeah. one problem is right now, you, no one can upload anything for any reason, and that way, no one can ever put a virus on my server. Oh. <laughs> the, moment I put, the moment I let people upload pictures, for instance, there's a chance that they will contain a virus that I can't detect, and then anyone who plays the game and sees that flag instantly gets that virus on their computer. And now, you know, by avoiding that upload thing, then that can't be possible. But I would like to be able to to let people obviously have their own custom flags. Maybe doing something with like Unicode characters then, or emojis. It would be a fight over the smiley face. <laughs> well, yeah, okay, more diverse flags one way or another it has to happen. Yeah, somehow, you know? yeah, otherwise we will get confused by each other's like very similar flag designs and people will probably duplicate just because there's not that much background is there a way that is it is there a way that you can see when someone's colonizing so if i was to see hey this planet is currently being colonized by nova and try and take over that colonization process and be like hi i've killed all your citizens and now i'm colonizing it with myself boo well, Ooh. I mean, yeah, you, right now, if you, you know, bombard or try to invade a planet that's being colonized still, you'll just destroy it. Like, just take it over after the planets film. are being colonized at the moment, can you? Like, I can't tell what planets you at the moment are colonizing, for example, Nova. I can't see. And that's what I'm meaning. That just seems like a terrible thing to do, Jack. Well, I mean, that is a pretty good strategy, too. What were you saying, sorry, Mark? Does it just take it over after it's built? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, okay. Well, what do you guys think that it, there shouldn't be? You shouldn't be able to tell when someone's colonizing. I know you can't right now, but I can make it so that you could. No, you I guess you could. Weird or? It doesn't bother me much. It's one of those things. Like to me, it makes sense. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you, like, would, you would be able to see, I mean, of course, in real life, you'd be able to see, like, there are ships down there doing stuff, or, you know, there's people unloading cargo or whatever colonization looks like. So I suppose that does make sense. All right. Maybe, Elijah, back to you. Do you have any thoughts? or? I do wait? have... Or... I remember it was something I forgot about in combat. I just uh, thought having retreat protocols might be really good. Like, I don't want to lose my entire fleet every time if I 
I set the retreat um, limit like 50% and I jet back to my nearest system. Oh, that's somehow. a good idea. Right. Yeah, we talked about that once. Okay, yeah. That's a good idea, actually, because, yeah, you, maybe you wouldn't actually, especially because sometimes you can't see, like, what, I mean, how many yeah. ships somebody has like, or what defenses they've got or anything. And so you might be like, oh, yeah. shit, I thought this yeah. was going to be easy and actually. Like, it's like I got 500 ships against, I don't know how many hundred ships, but this is going to be bloodbath. And it's like, I lost everything in one go. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah it'd be um... nice to have that happen. Okay. that's a lot of ships to lose at once you know also the whole combat thing i still find very difficult like you have no idea i've i i at least feel like i have pretty much no idea like what's gonna happen like because there's the ships there's the shields there's whatever ground stuff they've got going on there's like all these other things that can happen and it seems like there's no explanation or like there's too many variables to understand like what chance you actually have. So you're just getting there. Oh, yeah, you got the go. summary screen. Now you just got to make the summary screen be informative. Yeah, the summary <laughs> screen doesn't make any sense. <laughs> got nothing right now. And with orbital bombardment, you need it to be that once you have killed actually everyone on the planet, it doesn't just keep bombarding it because they're all gone already. Oh, yeah, that's stupid. Yeah, because then you lose the bombs and then you have to go reload for no reason. I hated that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, the combat has a lot to bomb and mean, yeah. maybe be improved. Yeah. Yeah, the combat. I mean, before when like, we didn't have to reload the bombs, it was no big deal. But once you added in reloading, that was super dumb. <laughs> like, there's zero people. I'm gonna keep bombing it for like several more cycles. <laughs> I was so sad. That was sad. I'm not sure if that's. I think I stopped that from happening, but I don't know. I'll I'll try to check. Yeah, bomb somebody. Yeah. <laughs> all right uh back to you elijah um i was i was wondering just more about strategies uh, in terms of like research strategies or build strategies early on um is, is there anything that you would suggest to early on players if anyone watches this or uh like what did you learn kind of in the beginning about how to proceed Um, you know what, early on that um, planetary intergovernance step was pretty weird, I guess. <laughs> it does unlock and lets you get further, but if you don't even know you have to get to do that, and it unlocks so much more things sometimes, I don't know, it might really confuse somebody. Um, and that whole thing is confusing. Yeah. Uh, balancing your resource production versus war building versus resource development building kind of thing i don't know it's just, you figure it out on your own as you go it's natural is it balanced like what do you mean by balance well i guess like the amount of time it takes to research something versus i'm just wondering about the about the timing of things, I think, because like you're you're the people who stayed on, but there's a lot of people who dropped off, and I just wondered if in the beginning, because in the beginning usually is when people they play it, they they either figure it out or they don't, and then they either like it or they don't, and then they drop out, right? Yeah, I my, think need my very first time, I thought I, I thought it was way too easy to spend resources, and I spent all my resources, and then I think I just reset my character and started again because it would have taken me like two weeks to get all the resources back because um, the resource generation is like very slow with one planet. That's true. Also, I find it really sad when you try to research something and it says you're going to take like 369 years and you feel like there's no way to change that and it makes you want to cry <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> I mean, like my, yeah, my anti-gravity right now is 52 years in here because I started way past you guys. 52 years. Oh. Like, what the heck? Yeah, that's that changed. So I don't know if you have to adjust the research again, because after you changed the way that the civics worked, because we were just blasting through research and blasting through. I mean, before that civics change, we were just raking in everything. And uh, yeah, true, I yeah. would have researched everything by now if you hadn't changed the civics. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's a give and take between that. I think there still might be a little touch made. I felt that Earlier on, I researched things so fast, maybe it was the civics. Um, because now everything is really slowed down. You know, I've got 
quite a lot of research going on right now again, but um, yeah, it's still going to take a hefty amount of time to get the next things, which I'm in it for the long haul, kind of like, it. I, you know, I don't know how long you want these instances to last for, certainly more than like a month, right? So yeah, I'm hoping like three months to six months kind of idea, something like well, that. What happens? It might be a little sure? bit slow yeah. now to make it three to six months based on the re the research generation I'm getting. So yeah. like it, it'll take longer or you mean they'll be they'll be finished all the research before that? You think? I don't think I'd get there if it's like for aiming for three to six months. I think I've researched it would take it even longer than that right now. Um, yeah, I mean, so it's it's slowed down quite a lot right now hmm. and um but it was like, okay if, before when the civics were out of control i guess is what i'm saying so it's a balance between the civics control and the research levels so maybe maybe the research needs to be eased up a little bit so we can get it a little easier now if we're not you know massing so much research through civics as we were um hmm. so i know some people must have been taking advantage of civics a lot earlier than i was there someone's really advanced so yeah, I think Chris, this time you're way ahead of everyone, it seems, for some reason. Yeah, I've got like 20 something thousand strategies. research right now. Yeah, Chris, yeah. You've got, that's crazy. Are you serious? Yeah, I've got a bunch of planets that are like fully production. I went and I colonize, I max out production. And then after production is at a certain level, then I max out research. Yeah, I didn't even play with civics for a couple of weeks. So you probably jumped on it right away. And that and I realized how much that would have set me back, like how much farther ahead I could have been if I was savvy about civics on the start there. Yeah, because, well, the main problem is, is when you prioritize production of a new planet, then it's not really useful until all the stuff oh, is produced. So I'm fine having like zero research and, and lower like resource production until all the oh, yeah, of course. stuff is built saying, and like, have rebalanced. There was, a gold, <laughs> there was a gold rush era when he first implemented civics and he probably jumped on it. I yeah, I was all over it. He realized that, that was it was slow. <laughs> yeah, I didn't understand that, like, what it was for Asia. So I was like, what? What are these stupid sliders? Oh, I don't care about those. And then I was sad because it actually was super important. <laughs> yeah, I, I at least a week or two, I didn't bother changing it much. And it would have just skyrocketed me. I still think I have only, like, a thousand research points if with everything, like, maxed. So uh, it's pretty bad. Lunar colonies is a huge boost to researching. Mm. Huge. Yeah, lunar colonies, do you think I don't too much to... or it's just awesome that it's a lot? What do you think, Chris? It takes a long time to build. It's awesome. Yeah, I like it. How much does it increase? I don't understand how much it increases my population max by. Um... I would have to look that up. <laughs> yeah, it'd be cool if I could just see things, more information like that about what my buildings were actually doing to my colony. Yeah, more information everywhere would be really good. Yeah, I need, I know. Yeah, it needs it needs a spacepedia, like the civilization is a civilpedia, so you can look up every building, every technology, even ahead of the time that you get it, and, and kind of like, well, kind of about pop everything. Ups, right? When you hover over something with a pop-up window, maybe no. more. <laughs> something people okay. would just be and just digging through space of PD is not game playing yeah yeah well, I, I like the idea of like the population stuff too because i don't really understand it either but like the resource generation and other stuff you can hold the mouse pointer over and you get all the stats that contribute to it but uh, population and population max and population growth um i don't really know how to see like what's contributing to it to kind of understand it but I just kind of build everything that that contributes to it anyways, but I don't really know exactly the impact. Also, you need to have balancing things. Like when you bring in a new thing that does one action, you need to have something that is possible to gain to like counter that action. Otherwise it just feels like crap. <laughs> well, you know I'm, I mean? I'm trying not to bring anything else new into the game, but is there anything that well, what was I saying? Um, I'm just trying to remember what there was something recently okay. that you changed that didn't have any kind of counterbalance. Um, no, of course I can't remember what it was. And I was sad because I was like, oh, well, what's the point of this? And then you brought in like overpopulation, but then you said there's no way to fix it. So what's the point of it? No, you can correct your overpopulation eventually. How? 
uh, by building housing developments and moving your colonies the way which will increase. And certain technologies will just increase your max population right away. Yeah, I guess, but I guess that's not really solving. your government. But I mean, yeah, the yeah, until you get you know global planning and a lot of these long term things, it's your home planet is supposed to be overpopulated. I hear Michael. It's like right. the idea of Earth, you know, a 50 year, 100 years from now, it's going to be ridiculous unless something changes anyway. So how would we fix that, right? Move people out to colonies, you know, et cetera. But that would take millions of ships. So yeah, it's not supposed to really be easy to do that. Populations right. might grow a little bit too fast too. Yeah, I think they do sometimes. Especially on your home planet. You're muted, Nova. Nova, you're muted. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. Population too fast. Horse box. And um, oh, uh, the other thing is pretty cool about the game is like seeing the pictures. You know, like the the oh, landscape of the planet. That's pretty cool. So keep expanding on that and making. I don't know if you know, it can have multiple yeah. shots of a planet too, but it's kind yeah. of fun just to click through your planets and imagine they're going to each one and stuff. Yeah, I like that too. I like those pictures. Are they still stolen or are they new? Those are all legitimately taken from uh, um, what's it called? Uh, common or Creative Commons free to use. Oh, yeah. But, That's good. However, I will be replacing them with uh, proprietary Game of Planets pictures soon. Ooh. Before I make any money off the game, in case anyone's watching this now. <laughs> yeah, when are you uh, going to bring in like the paying for stuff thing? Yeah, so hopefully um, you guys will notice kind of at the start of this new instance that I will have built in a kind of monetization thing. Oh, really? Already? Uh, I didn't know that. And also, it doesn't really, you don't have to use it. Like you don't have to spend any money and I don't expect, expect you guys to start giving me money. It's just a way that other people that I don't know can give me money, no, mainly. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also, yeah, it's an incentive to like increase things. So I don't know, there's gonna be a whole bunch of balancing thing with that. Cause I don't want people to just drop 50 bucks on the game and suddenly be winning. Like that's- retarded. Yeah, that would suck. Yeah. But no one wants to play a game like that. So I've tried to balance it in a way that, you know, they, they get stuff that you could normally just get by playing and that there's more randomness as well in that but essentially yeah i'm gonna have to get feedback about that and this hopefully will be the last actual beta test uh this this you know one that starts march 1st so i can get everything else finished and you guys are my veteran testers so i will definitely be looking to all of you to say you know this sucks that is better this is broken still and stuff like that. So well, for, for monetization, people like skins and stuff too. Like I, I notice a lot of games are doing monetization just for um, aesthetics, not even for anything that helps them progress yeah. in the game. Especially RPGs, that is like the biggest money maker because you can get like a new hat and you, you know, yeah, that's crazy. And all this stuff that doesn't matter. I'm I'm trying to brainstorm ways I can build that into this game, you know, other than you know, your own custom flag or you know, your own leader picture, maybe your own background for the planets. I can't think of too many things yet that, that are like- Open spaceships? Yeah, um, yeah, that are looking spaceships and stuff. What kind of things now can people buy in the new version? Like what kinds of things have you put in? So uh, yeah, I can pull that out and give you guys a quick preview. Okay. Basically- I didn't even realize you did that yet. It's kind of crazy. Oh, well, it's not in, in this version. No, I don't. So I mean, it's not exactly you're buying things. So what will happen is after your uh, yeah. second or third surface scan on your home planet, uh, you'll you will discover a uh, you'll discover alien wreckage, the wreckage of an, of an ancient alien spacecraft that has crashed on your planet long ago. That will give you an alien artifact and two energy spheres. Uh, and then from then on, you can use these energy spheres in the alien artifact to activate certain things. You'll be able to get the energy spheres a bunch of different ways. You know, one of them is you pay for them, but there's a bunch of other ways that you can also get them. So that it's sort of, that's my idea of balancing it so that 
you can get all the same stuff as anyone who is paying money, but if you pay money, you get more of these spheres quicker is all. So what, you trade the spheres for stuff or? Um, okay, so this is the stuff I, I'm, I'm building in, so I'm not sure if it'll be awesome or if it'll wreck the balance of the game. I hope not, but you can use one sphere uh, in the various ways. Uh, one, you can get some resources. Um, that's probably an obvious one. Uh, another one you can add, you can get research points towards technology, basically. Um, you can use a sphere to permanently increase the base research or construction of one planet. Uh, you can use it to, oh yeah, yeah, you'll be able to use it to get another planetary leader on one of your other planets, for example. Um, you can use it yeah you can use you'll be able to use them in trade deals so you can actually trade them for resources and stuff like that with other players so it'll be another resource in a way um yeah down the road you'll be able to use it to unlock custom designs so like you can build a ship that that doesn't have any class and you can put whatever you want on it uh, and you'll be able to use spears to uh, do species evolution which you get from a few of the later technologies as well. Uh, oh yeah, you'll be able to use a sphere to cloak an actual star system for a certain period of years, oh, which completely disappear from all non allies. One, one sphere, just one sphere, does that? Yep. You How can cloak one one, one system. How much does one sphere uh, cost? I'll tell you in a second. Uh, also, you can use them to yeah increase the research, production, and construction of a certain planet for a number of years. Uh, you can use it to, yeah, okay, so those are the main things you can use it for. You can get spheres, uh, you'll, everyone will get automatically two spheres when they discover that alien wreckage in the second or third surface scan. Uh, you can also find them kind of randomly when you uh, capture planets that have one or more, uh, or sorry, Capture. Yeah, you can, have, you, can, you can hold a maximum of 10 spheres and you'll get them various ways. Okay. I wrote this down somewhere. <laughs> and what if you buy one? Like it's money, money. How, what could people pay you for them? Uh, if you want to buy one single sphere, it's five bucks. If you want to buy more spheres, you'll get a bit of a deal. Or it might have been 10 bucks. I can't remember now. 10 bucks what? Canadian? American. American. People like to see American dollars on games. Yeah, Americans. But yeah, basically the idea is that you'll get, no matter if you're ever spending a dollar or not, you will get spheres. You can do all the same stuff as the spheres, like with the spheres. It's just if you want to spend money, you'll get more spheres. And I'm hoping that even if someone wants to spend a hundred bucks a month, they're still not going to automatically win or anything. They're just going to get to do some of the stuff a little bit quicker. This pollution would be pretty freaking sweet to pay for though. One sphere gets that? That's One spirit like eliminates the pollution on your planet. That's kind of cool. No, no, no. species evolution. Oh yeah. That's kind of amazing. Because doesn't that like you get to choose whole new points or something? Well, you'll have to wait and see. Hopefully, it won't be. Oh. I've, I've tried to design this in a way that is not disrupting, but we will see. Okay. Well, interesting. And when you get rich, then you're going to be rewarded. Yeah, I will give you each 100,000 metal alloys. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> no, I don't know. If I ever make a lot of money on this game, obviously, I will be happy to to pay my alpha and beta testers way far from now. Oh, in the don't future. be the strangers. <laughs> don't be them. I don't know. I've never made a single dollar off it, obviously, yet. So who knows? Oh. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. I don't know yet. But if nothing else, it'd be a cool game to play with all you, and hopefully we'll have lots of other people to play with soon and make more interesting. Yeah. Sounds good. All right, maybe I'll pass it back to Elijah again. Uh, I think we're probably coming to the end, right? Unless people have any ideas they want to put forward. Uh... I'm good. Yeah, is there any last thoughts or questions, suggestions from players? I don't know if Mark is still here or not. His video is not, but I think he is. So maybe not. I had to start cooking dinner, but yeah, uh, good. I've said like everything I think of. I think I, I was cooking dinner the whole time. I just finished. <laughs> oh, nice. 
Okay, well, yeah. Oh, yeah. Eggs. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it's probably time for everyone to go then, probably. Eh? Well, yeah, this is awesome. Would you guys be interested in having another meeting like in a few weeks after the, the new launch has started and we kind of have a chance to see how it goes? Yeah. Yeah, I think that sounds like a good idea. Does that that also be kind of like a fresh view of the game, having so many players compared to just like yeah. half a dozen? Yeah. You can open it up to everybody who's playing and invite them in for maybe every two weeks to come in for a chat. You know, but if people quit the game, like if they, like say these 36 people or whatever, like if some of them just drop out, are you going to send them like an exit survey? I think that would be really useful. Yeah, Elijah and me were talking about how to do something like that. So that you definitely yeah, exit survey specifically would be smart. Yeah. Yeah, because then you'll know why people like they might say, "Oh, I didn't understand what to do, or whatever," and then at least you'll have an idea of like what what will keep people longer. Just finish. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm gonna go because right, my ear's gonna die. Yep. <laughs> Bye, I, everybody. Thank you, everyone, for joining, and uh, thank you, Elijah, for helping to facilitate, and uh, see you all in Game of Planets. All right. Yeah. See you, everybody. Bye. See you.